guys, Jesse504 here, bringing you a Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra video. Um, this one is a Wi-Fi battle. Uh, unfortunately, my audio didn't capture, but content is content, and especially with the Crown Tundra, anything really matters. Um, we've got a battle today versus Liv. Uh, Another fantastic content creator. Make sure to check her out. I will leave all of her links in the description below. Um, and yeah, Crown Tundra obviously added back a ton of new stuff. And OU added back a ton of new stuff as well. So it's crazy. If you look at my team, obviously we've got the nice new Galarian Zapdos with a choice band. Lefty's Heatran. Scarf Genesect with like an interesting set. We are U-Turn, Flash Cannon, Psychic, and... Ice Beam. Just, I felt like this team kinda lost hard to Blaziken because that's in the tier now. So I needed something and Genesect was the something. Then there's Lando T, which is a nice, uh, I believe it is like max HP, max speed. We have Knock, EQ, U-Turn, Defog, uh, Boots, Kyurem with DD and three attacks, and then Boots, Cinder is with four attacks. And then looking at her team, uh, Clef, Rotom Heat, Zygarde 50, uh, Lando, Metagross, and Moltres, Galarian. Uh, I didn't really know what Moltres did going into this. I knew it had Berserk and I knew it had no recovery, so I knew it was kind of a disappointment. And I just kind of wanted to lead my Genesect, so that's what you will see me do, is lead my Genesect. But I will skip until, yeah. Uh, I think I was contemplating if I, was, if I just want to like hard lead Kyurem, reading like a Lando lead. And if it was a Lando lead, I was like, you know, that'd be super huge. Like, getting to lead my uh, Kyurem into that, DDing, and potentially just going for game. Looking at matchup, there isn't a lot that wanted to take a Kyurem hit. So, we've got game time. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we did end up just leading Genesect into... A very very well predicted by her Rotom uh, which was a really smart lead especially now that I'm just like looking back at it um, threatens with status and then also a ton of other stuff but we do download a special attack and I wasn't calking but I knew psychic was not killing and I did not want to lose my Genesect early so I just wanted to u-turn and I knew u-turning would slowly wear down her team so that is exactly what you see me do, and that takes off like 10 to 15 percent, which is a good chunk. As I go out into my Heatran, and uh, this thing just doesn't want. Uh, I think that maybe a fire attack comes out just because there's a fat Genesect right there, but discharge was also a fair play. I was thinking potential toxic thunder wave could all come out. But we do just recover up a little bit of leftovers. Um, and then we go for our rocks here, but we are paralyzed, and I knew in the live comm footage, I was like, that is a risk that I've got to take, but still, uh, it's worth taking, uh, just because rocks, I think, were a, a, would be a very helpful thing for me this game, uh, but she just decides to switch, which is fair, uh, trying to potentially either catch me on a double or just go out into the Lando, which is fantastic. And I was like, maybe I can get my rocks up here. But unfortunately, we do get full parod. Um, I know with our Heatran, we were gonna have options to get rocks up later, so I wasn't too, too concerned. But it still is annoying. Uh, now I just ponder, and I was like, you know what? I can go into my own Landorus here, or I could go into Kira and get really aggressive. But I ultimately just decided to go out into my own Lando because I thought that that was probably the smartest thing to do was go out into my own Lando, intimidate it, and it could go for its rocks, it could go for def- or it's not going for defog yet because we didn't get up our rocks, but it could go for the knock, which was another thing that I was slightly concerned about, getting rid of our leftovers. And here, I think I just decided to knock back, uh, get some damage off and take away item, whether it be like boots, lefties or as we see here rocky helmet that does a good chunk of damage though um but that just does a chunk back to us as she gets her rocks up now and 
Thankfully, she gets them up in the face of my defogger. And I just want to say, the uh, the content does look pretty clean right now, the Lando. But we do just get that defog off, which is really nice. Uh, we get rid of the Stealth Rocks as she goes for a U-turn of her own. We are letting our landers get fairly worn down, but I saw it as my most expendable member this game. Just because a lot of the mods that it was here to check, like Garchomp and Blaziken being able to intimidate that thing, they're both gone. So, or they're not both gone, they're both not present on my opponent's team. So I just saw Lando as a safe, or as an alternative option. Um, and she goes Clef, and I contemplated if I wanted to scout it, but then I just quickly decide, go for the U-turn. U-turn was my best play there, as I do get a little bit of chip off, but that could potentially like reveal the item on the Clef. And we also do get a fairly free Heatran or Genesect here, one or the other. Uh, and I do go Genesect, and I was like, if she flamethrowers me, that is an incredible play. I'm not, I wouldn't even be mad. But Genesect was a fantastic win con for me this game, so... Uh, but she just goes for a teleport, and I was like, yeah, Rotom can come out again, that's fine. It was just a fairly, fairly safe play, just teleporting out, knowing that I couldn't really touch her. So... Um, yeah, there was like no reason... And then I can just now, as she clicks U-turn, uh, or as I click U-turn when the Rotom Heat comes in. And at this point, that thing's getting worn down. It's no longer a switching if I go for a Psychic. Which, at some point, uh, you gotta like catch on that Rotom is the Genesect switching. But for now, we just go out back into our Heatran and try to get those rocks up again. Uh, she goes for the Discharge, though as we take a chunk do get the leftovers recovery though keeping us nice and topped off or close to it i should say we're at about like three quarters of health right now but we can just get our rocks up fairly safely as she does decide to switch which was a smart play uh just couldn't really touch us and lando can come in on me every single time i contemplated going for the lava plume there because I was like, you know what, if I do get a burn on the Lando, that'll be really helpful. But Rock's chip adds up. And I think that her Lando might be going for a defog here. I've, I thought this was perfect bait for Lando to be going for a defog. And then Galarian Zapdos could come in and get a Defiant plus two attack raise. Um, so the Zapdos is pretty fresh off of the end game. I had to like mint it and stuff. Uh, or not mint it, she actually helped get the Zapdos battle ready. The only thing that it's missing is, I believe I was one bottle cap short for when I was capping it, but she actually goes for her own rocks, which is fine. I was more so expecting um, defog, which, but I think her going for rocks shows that she probably doesn't have defog. Uh, she's probably EQ U-turn, um... Here at uh, EQ, U-Turn, Knock, and Rocks. Here I checked the team. I was like, you know what? I think that she's going to come in and switch. But she actually doesn't. So we just get a nice choice banded U-Turn off. Taking off about another 10% of the Lando's health. Obviously with no recovery and Rocks up. That sh thing should eventually be going down slowly. I got into my own Lando here. I was like, you're not you're not doing much to me. I will intimidate you again. At this point, it's like kind of my Lando is the best answer to her Lando. Um... Because Lando's actually pretty solid into my team. But we do... Or she does go for the knockoff again. Which is nice, because I didn't want to lose my choice band. It was very impactful. Just, like, getting good Brave Bird rolls on the Metagross, especially uh, later down the line, is going to be huge. And keeping the choice band allows me to do that. Here I go for the knock. As she just pops a U-turn. Um... I went for the knock to potentially try to get items or just get damage off, but like, yeah, that Lando is getting fairly worn down. When it comes in again, it's going to be about 30 to 40% health left, which is going to be nice because not a lot wants to come in on that. Up next is the Zygarde, and this is a very scary point in the game for me. Um, Zygarde comes out. I was like, you know what? 
Zygarde probably isn't going to set up yet on me. Uh, and we're fast, so we can scout if she's fast Zygarde or if she's going to be a more bulky Zygarde. And we still have, if she goes for the substitute, we have Kieran Black with Icicle Spear, and each one should be breaking a sub on its own and then doing a chunk past that. So we just got a U-turn off to a chunk, and that revealed to be pretty defensive, though, I believe. I wasn't calcing, but it was just, like, intuitively, yeah. I got into my Genesect knowing that, uh, like, if she set up a Dragon Dance, I'd be fine. If she set up a Coil, I'd be fine. I can Ice Beam it, because I'm going to be faster. She actually goes for Thousand Arrows, which actually looks fantastic in this game. Like, look at that. That's beautiful. Especially, like, the nice little hexagons there. Really, really shows Zygarde. But now I knew that she would know that I have Ice Beam, uh, so I just decided to click Psychic, potentially projecting that Rotom to come in, because I know that Rotom is going to come in, and I knew that since I downloaded Special Attack, I knew I was doing a fat chunk to this Rotom, and that it, it, it is no longer a switch in. Boom. Rotom is down about 50%, and then I can do that again, and now the Rotom is pretty much dead. Um... I contemplated thinking if she was going to save her Rotom, or if I should just attack again, but I think that I thought that she was going to double out, so I decided to switch out, not wanting to... I thought she was actually going to go into her Galarian Moltres, but I didn't want to risk anything too, too much, and I wasn't really sh sure what Galarian Moltres was going to do, so sort of as like a preventative measure, I... Went out into my Landorus as like sort of a sack. Not no, I I knew that she was gonna switch. I thought that the Rodom was gonna be very helpful, but she does go out into this Moltres, revealing to be Boots. Um, and I was like, you know, what does this thing do exactly? I knew that its coverage wasn't the best, and I knew that potentially getting rid of the Boots would be huge for me. And so I was like, you know, I don't know if this thing comes in and switches out a lot or not. But I do know that potentially getting rid of boots is very, very helpful. So I go for my knockoff, doing a good chunk, um, getting rid of the boots as she goes for agility. And I was like, ooh, that's going to be scary. Now this thing is faster than my whole team. But I still have Monza eat hits because its special attack is only 100. So yeah, as long as I potentially went a little too risky with this U-turn, because I wasn't sure how much damage I was doing, if I was going to put it in Berserk range, then it just came down to what flying move she chose, uh, between Air Slash or Hurricane, I believe. Uh, Hurricane would have had a chance to kill my Kiram, but uh, also has a good chance of missing, and then Air Slash, I don't think killed at plus three, but I could be wrong. Uh, I was like, at this point, like, ugh, I don't want to lose my Kiram, because this thing is so huge to me, if, like, I click DD once or twice and then I just win. But I had to go Kiram, otherwise I kind of just lost uh, right there, or at least lost a bunch of Mons. So it all came down to what move was. I'm not sure. I don't... I know Kiram is very bulky. Uh, even though I'm, like, very offensive Kiram, it's still incredibly bulky as a Pokemon. As she just clicks the Hurricane, and boom, that's a chunk. Uh, that is, yeah, we're, we're dead. We do get clicking, uh, Icicle Spear, and we do end up taking this thing out, which is huge. And I believe that is the first Mon to drop all game, which is incredible. Uh, either first or second. Um, and now here, she has pretty free into whatever Mon she wants to go into. I thought that she would go into something that outsped me for an easy, quick revenge kill. But in fact, she goes into Metagross, and I was like, you know what, you're probably going to end up clicking Bullet Punch. But what exactly do I want to do about that Bullet Punch? And the answer that I came up with was, you know, I'm not really going to come in. Let me just click Fusion Bolt and sack off my Metagross, er, and click off, click Fusion Bolt into the Metagross to do about like 40%, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh, as you see, the Fusion Bolt, which also looks incredible. Uh, I like the look of this game. As, yeah, this Metagross, that did about 30%. And now I can click Ice Punch. I thought that she might have clicked Bullet Punch and I would have gotten no damage off. But that damage actually is going to come in very much clutch. Uh, as I got into my Cinderace to try and scare this Metagross off. Um, I know that Sucker Punch would kill, I'm pretty sure. And then Pyro Ball for sure kills. But I just have to go for High Jump Kick. Predicting that she would bring in like a Pyro Ball Resist, maybe a Zygarde. 
or maybe a Rotom, although I'm pretty sure Pyro Ball still killed, if not in one, in two clicks. And here I click HJK. I was like, oh shit, uh, when it took a second for Libero, but in fact it was all good. Um, and we did just kill, which is nice. Adios Rotom Heat. Uh, she takes her time deciding what she wants to go into. All good, all good. Um, and I knew that whatever she did uh, go into it would be pretty scary for me. And she actually picks the Zygarde. And I was like, you know, HJK is still doing a chunk. I'm not going to let you set up free on me. So we do just end up clicking that high jump kick. And taking a chunk off as she clicks Dragon Dance. And I was like, you know, this is very scary for me. Let me try to click Sucker before I die. And this turn takes a little bit just because I was scared. Like, what is she going to do? I know she outspeeds me now. She knows that she outspeeds me because I've revealed my boots. Um, so it's just all about click and we'll see. Um, I clicked Sucker. And I'm not sure if I was ever killing here. But I knew that she would attack at least the first turn. And I thought I died, to be completely honest. I thought that this uh, this Thousand Arrows would just kill me. Uh, and maybe she would have extreme speed on here as well to do me in. But I just switched to my Dark type to get the step. And we leave her on like, what? This gotta be like 20 health. Maybe even less. As she uh, gets a 33% berry to go back to near full. She arrows me and we actually eat, which was surprising. But here, I know that now we're playing with Sucker Punches and Mind Games. So what I'm gonna do is click HJK and she goes Glare, which is the smart play. Uh, I respect it because no matter what, it gives her a good chance to do stuff. And we do get full Barret, which is unfortunate because we did get the play right. Uh, and then we kind of just got punished for getting the play right. But it's all good. Uh, we are paralyzed injuries now as she clicks dragon dance again, which I think was a potential choke I'm not sure if I had anything that ate even plus one so just playing for The sucker miss or not for the sucker, because I know that she knows that she eats the sucker um, Actually, no, she needed a second dragon dance because of because of the genocide never mind that was a smart blend um, But we are able to just take it out which is nice um, she goes out into the Clefable, and I was like, I need to get some damage off onto this Clefable. Let me click my Pyro Ball. We're paralyzed Cinderace. Uh, hopefully she decides to take me out because potentially setting a wish into a protect could leave her at a higher health point. But actually, I just click my Pyro Ball as she clicks Moonblast and does take me out. Um, yeah. Adios Cinderace. Uh, here I had options as for what I wanted to do. Um, Clef is very fat and very tough for me to take down. So I had options because I had Genesect, Lando, um, I also had Heatran uh, as another potential Clefable in. And actually, Heatran looked fantastic in my endgame uh, as well. Lando was a nice little sack piece. But we also have the Zapdos, which should be doing chunks to stuff. But I know that she might think that I click Flash Cannon here. So I actually click U-Turn, expecting the Metagross to come in. But she makes a good play and protects. And what that does is now she knows, because I, she knows I'm choice locked. So scouting with Protect was a very smart play there. Because um, I do believe Flash Cannon would kill. But now she knows that I'm U-turning, and that's that's free real estate for a wish. I know that she knows that I know that it's free real estate for a wish. Um, that does brings her right below 50%, but like with a wish and then a protect, it shouldn't matter. I go Lando because I don't want to get chip on my Zapdos. And so I do believe that I would die to rocks here. I wasn't 100% sure on it. But then I looked at my health, and I was like, yeah, I should be dying. And Audio Slanderous, that is fine by me 100% as she clicks the wish and is at this point going to be at a fairly high health point 
and I would get reminded brutally of how bad the Switch's uh, internal timer is, but it's mm, still kind of eh. We go out into our Zapdos um, and take a chunk from rocks, but we just kind of get a Brave Bird here. Um, and I think that she might have thought that she lived this, but she does not protect. So we kill the Clefable, um, which is huge. Being able to get rid of that Clefable is... I thought that was fat that I wasn't breaking. At the, in, in the end, I wouldn't be getting anything out of it. She goes out into the Metagross and... I just decide, you know what, I'm banded, let me click Brave Bird again off of 125 base attack, choice band, jolly nature, and we end up doing a chunk to ourselves as well, and she clicks Ice Punch, and I was like, maybe we live this, but probably not, and yeah, there was no chance that we live that, um, and at this point I was like, wait, Ice Beam Genesec just wins, so I thought that I had a switch into rocks. I was like fairly certain I did. Like I had thought 20% health. So that's a good switch into rocks. And in fact, we do just get that download up and we get the special attack, which I was like, yep, that is a good game. Um, as long as we just click buttons fast enough, we should be all good. And there goes the ice beam. Uh and audios to the Metagross, and then Lando dies to an Ice Beam as well, which is really nice. Um, Lando comes in, yeah, and 60 seconds, 59, game is almost over, but I know that as long as we both click our moves, Ice Beam pops and we win. So I quickly just click that Ice Beam, and I'm just waiting, I'm like, are you gonna really take 60 seconds, are you gonna let me get this? And Genesect claims another one. Genesect, fantastic Pokemon in the OU metagame at this moment. But yeah, and that is game. Good game to my opponent. And uh, until next time, Jesse504, out. Peace.